Hi everyone, Ben here from Sydney Fruit Gardening. Um, <clears throat> just thought I'd do a quick video. It is in the uh, middle of July here in Sydney and uh, it is a pretty quiet time in the garden, but um, unfortunately due to uh, having uh, COVID at the moment, um, I'm spending a little bit more time in the garden uh, this week. So uh, fortunately just a mild case. It's really um, not too much to worry uh, myself about at the moment. Um, um, hopefully it doesn't get too much worse, but uh, yeah, anyway, um, so I've been spending a bit of time in the garden just tidying things up before we get to spring and it's a beautiful 20 degree day here in Sydney, nice for a change not to have any rain and um, you know, and a bit of sunshine about, so I'll um, show you a few things that are going on. All right, so probably the first thing, this is, this is the... Uh, early beauty early beauty peach um, uh, first blossom for the season there um, this is the the first time that I've grown peaches um, so I'm really excited as my garden you know progresses that I'm going to have fruit at different times of the year and having some peaches heading into um, yeah, spring um, um, yeah, he's going to be fantastic. So I have been thinking about how I prune these plants as well. And I think I'll see if I get any peaches on those lower branches, but I think those lower branches are going to come off um, just so that they, you know, they don't get in the way when I'm mowing around um, the tree. So, so yeah, that's the Tropic Sunset Peach. Um, a friend of mine has kindly uh, given me uh, some scion wood of a scarlet peach or a, a peach with sort of red leaves um, so I think the right time to graft peaches is actually you know um, after they've bloomed and come you know when they're starting to shoot green growth um, let me know if you know the answer to that guys yeah, when is the right time to graft peaches but I do plan on grafting um, onto one of these branches that uh, new variety of peach so Another thing I'll show you quickly, I'll, this is a winter banana apple which I've let go and lost its leaves at all. It's actually growing, there were some, some late flowers that came out on this one and it's actually growing a few apples. The cold has turned them very red. Um, so we'll see how these progress and if, if we do get uh, some apples there. All right, just a veggie patch, growing a few bits and pieces, snow peas, bok choy back there. Um, all the blueberries are flowering, flowering very nicely. Um, I've just moved them closer to this perennial basil, which is like a magnet for bees. You can sort of see some of them at work. Yeah. They just love that perennial basil, the bees, so I moved them here just for pollination's sake. You can see some of the blueberries starting to form, but most of them are still very much flowers at this stage. Got um, the blueberry burst variety, and I think, I forgot what the other variety is, to be honest. Um, all right, what I want to show you here was, this is the Atherton Raspberry. Um, it's actually flowering. Um, so it's got a few flowers on it developing. So I might get a few Atherton Raspberries out of this. It's a spiky thing. Um, it's not going to go in the garden anywhere. It's gonna stay in a pot. Um, it's just way too spiky and horrible um, for me to plant in the garden, to be honest. I don't have that much space to, to plant these uh, more unruly, spiky plants, so. All right, the other thing I've done is I've done some work on this potted citrus. Um, so it is a, I brought it as a lemon lime and I've picked all the limes, bar for a couple which are still small. Um, you know, they were all going quite yellow and overripe, so I actually made limeade out of them, which is a lime version of lemonade. It's, you know, um, quite nice. Um, um, so I've got that in the fridge and just drinking that. 
every so often no doubt the vitamin c is helping with the cold at the moment or the covid um the lemons will be next there's plenty of lemons there um i'll probably you know freeze some of the juice for use later in the year um but i might also make some lemonade out of that as well um, i did have a big problem with san jose scale on this um which is a tiny scale and you can see it here tiny scale that actually sits on the fruits and what it does to the apple trees in particular is that it um the apple trees over there it actually leaves marks on the apples themselves that look like look like bites um but um so they make the fruit look quite unappealing even though it's very much edible i just don't like them um so i've just sprayed some lime sulfur and i've also given a um given it a prune um, and in pruning this citrus i'm trying to promote these grafts to grow so the the kaffir lime graft here i've just cut away every everything else so hopefully that the tree focuses its energy down on these grafts so that was a the kaffir lime and and uh, this was the blood orange i didn't realize there was a blood orange i knew it was some sort of orange um, very happy that it's a blood orange. I picked that one and enjoyed that the other day. And um, I believe this is a mandarin. The lady told me it was a, a mandarin when I picked it up from her. But then when I spoke to her later, she she said, "No, I didn't give you a mandarin." <laughs> so, so I don't know what it is, but we'll um, we'll see uh, when that one fruits. So hopefully, just by pruning the, away this additional growth here and letting it focus on that there, we'll. Um, you know, hopefully promote those grafts to grow really really well so that's uh, the citrus uh, there <clears throat> um, also been pruning the espalia apples and uh, painting them white so what I do is just use some watered down white paint um, just to give them a bit of sun protection because this is north facing and on a hot day you know these um over time you know the young yeah you know, the trees can actually get burnt i believe so um so that's what i've done there um i'm still learning how to prune apples to be honest espalier makes it even more tricky but it's kind of interesting i don't know if it's our climate or or what it is but um some varieties like um so the dorset golden this is a dorset golden graft here all the way up and this is forming nice spurs and the dorset golden is a low chill apple so it doesn't require many chill hours to form you know fruit buds and fruit well um, but what people have found is that apples generally don't need as many chill hours as what was originally thought however what i'd am finding is you know the the other varieties like apple um fuji apple and this is fuji mainly uh, the, the the base of the trees are fuji um, it doesn't form those nice small spurs it sort of sends out these long shoots and um you know if i cut them back during winter spring comes and they just shoot off again if i cut them back in summer um Sometimes I get a nice um, bud forming where you cut it back, like here. Um, although one of the things I do do is this dog leg trick. So when the, the growth is new, you fold it over and then it just heals, actually heals really strong um, into a dog leg shape and then the apples hang off that. More importantly, when the, the apple branch is facing down like that, it's more likely to grow fruit buds. So I've done that in a few places. So there's about 25 varieties on these apples now. Um, over three trees grafted on. Um, and uh, yeah, apples is just something I enjoy collecting. Um, I've got more grafts coming this year and I've got a whole heap of the the dwarf potted apples which um, I graft up and uh, sell locally. Now I'll take you down 
to those. Most of the other tropical seedlings are all doing fine. The exception here are the sour sops. The little sour sop seedlings are struggling outside. Unsurprisingly, the Chempdax seedlings as well did not make it. But you know, Canistel, you know, Suriname cherry, uh, lemon drop mangosteen, achacha, relinia, jackfruit, they're all doing okay. And um, <laughs> this is the um, this is where the ones that need wrapping up in cotton will go. So the, the star apple, the acerola, the, um, the abbey use, and uh, the sour sop. Again, north facing window, so they, they just cop um, sun in the morning and early afternoon, which is great. All right. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you already, this is the tropic uh, tropic sweet I think tropic sweet apple this is already starting to try and shoot out uh, blooms um, so yeah so it's um, it's already off and racing um, which is interesting because I don't think there'll be anything else open to pollinate it now I read that it could be a self-pollinating variety of apple. Um, I'm not sure about that. That that doesn't always prove true. Um, a lot of the time online they say, "Oh, this is you know, partially self-pollinating," and reality is, it usually isn't. So we'll see how they go. Um, I would love to get some more apples from this. This was a particularly delicious. Apple, uh, particularly for an, an early variety of apple, which are generally not as nice as the um, mid to late season apples. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, hopefully it can pollinate itself, or one of these other little apple trees decides to spit out a you know unusual um, timed flower, <laughs> um, because now is extremely early for apples to be flowering. Um, couple of other new arrivals I'll show you quickly so uh, I did have a friend come around and um, uh, we we did a bit of a swap so I, I gave him some apple an apple tree and some seed um, some seedlings and uh, some cyan wood um, and he in return gave me um, some cuttings from his own pear and apple trees and peach and um, these two pear trees um, so the Buredial Dial, Buredial and the Bure Hardy. Um, so at the moment these are in pots um, but I have used them to graft onto um, my quince C. See I'm not sure what these are grafted onto if they're quince C or not. Quince C pear seedlings are the most dwarfing variety which is what I want. Um, I do have a quince C here and I have just grafted on Bure Hardy um and uh the pure dial onto that so um look they are side grafts they're not ideal in terms of you know ideally you'd want a nice bit coming off to graft onto but i did want graft directly onto the rootstock this is a hoswi graft that i've done previously and what i've read is that grafting a euro pair onto an asian pair or vice versa may not be good long term sometimes the graft will fail don't know if that's true or not just what i read on the internet so i've grafted them directly onto the root stock so we'll see how that goes um here's another experiment in the making so these are um uh, flying dragon citrus root stock so um i'm planning to try and make up a couple of double, triple grafted um, citrus trees, which I'll, I'll um, sell locally in the future. So I'll give that a go um, when the time's right, which is generally I've found in January or February each year, although some people I think have success in spring. Um, so I'll try and do some of that grafting later on and make up some little trees um, with multiple citrus varieties on it. Uh, they're dwarf root stock, of course. Um, Alright, I'll, I'll take you out front real quickly. The mango 
I've just cut down the bottom here so now it's more even um, it was really dripping down to the ground and when it was touching the ground the ants were coming up and farming the scale so stop that a um, little mulberry mulberry's doing all right yeah. Pitanguinia, Pitanguinia's doing good. Um, is that already a shoot coming out? Yeah, that's the first signs of life on the pomegranate. On the wonderful pomegranate. Yeah, there's some more shoots coming over there too. Can't see that well. <coughs> I picked all the oranges off the navelina. Cherry's doing okay. Probably not a lot else to show you at this stage. Tamarillo's doing good. Tamarillo just keeps on going. I want to sh the other thing I want to show you is I've done another couple of grafts onto this multi-graft cherry. So this cherry has lapins on it already, a Stella, uh, Mini Royal. And I've just grafted Royal Lee onto here as well. So I've got that from my own tree. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll, those grafts will take and I'll put this in as another espalier somewhere, somewhere around the, the property. <laughs> um, white mulberry cuttings. even trying to fruit I think um, the uh, cha cha but what I did want to show you is I've gotten rid of the little greenhouse what I'm working out is so far most you know our winter's just not bad enough to require a greenhouse except for except for the real sensitive ones and what I've done is just put those inside in uh, in front of that window I showed you before so now that greenhouse is gone it opens up some space for the avocado here um, I'm thinking potentially that cherry espalier might go here another raised bed potentially that's the height of the Sun now that height will come down the further we head into spring making this kind of ideal <coughs> for a deciduous tree so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, Abo's doing good too. Not much by way of flowering, maybe something here. I don't know. I think the words can be a bit tricky, so I'm gonna, when it gets a big, bit bigger, I'll graft on some other varieties on this as well, I think. Heaps of chilies on the Bishop's Crown. Don't know not what, really what to do with them. I've done up, I've pickled five jars of them. <laughs> so far so um yeah good good chili if you um can get your hands on it um all right everything else is kind of doing okay still to be honest won't go into detail you can see everything here the panama berry's been knocked around but it's doing all right uh relinia's looking the same there you go that one's doing all right. Yeah, lost a lot of leaves, but it's doing okay. And uh, this is the one that's been knocked around more. You can see all the dead growth and whatnot, which I showed you last time, I think, but it is, it is trying to put out new growth already. I think the key this year, it is doing a lot better than last year. Um, the key has been A, the trampoline being moved in front of it and B, uh, regular applications of sea salt. Um, the other one that's doing surprisingly well is the wax jambu. Wax jambu is really well protected here. Um, you know, it's some minor damage up, to, up here, but really when you look at the rest of the tree, it's doing really well. So happy with that. I think the wax jambu is a success. So. So far, so good there. Okay, guys. 
that's probably enough for today about about 20 minutes although i'll probably cut that back so um thanks for tuning in hope you got something out of that and um hope you're enjoying gardening as well at the moment so i'll catch you in the next video bye